you came into when you came into training camp, you know, you had sort of Lafayette and Avante as the top two guys. How, how do you feel like you guys have done developing depth beyond that in these three weeks? Uh, I think we've been doing a good job. I mean, and, and, and the big thing about it is we've just been keeping the competition battle open. You know, so you know, one day it can be one guy up, the next day, you know, somebody else is stepping to the plate, and that's what we need. Uh, if, if, if God forbid something happens and somebody goes down, we want to know the next guy is one is a, is a one as well. So uh, that's the biggest thing is coming out here and developing that depth and, and challenging those guys every day. If you, if you had to replace one of your starting cornerbacks, would Dennis be the guy you'd move over, and then you had to find another nickelback? You know, I think we still got you know a little bit more time to, to kind of tell with that. Uh, you know, uh, right now, uh, when we all run in our, 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 our mixed coverage and putting an extra DB in it, it's, uh, it's been Motley at times, it's been Ryan Lewis at times. So, um, we're, just, we're just shuffling, and, and that goes, like I mentioned, day by day. It could be one guy up and then the next guy. Uh, so, uh, we're, like I said, we're going to keep it open and, and keep challenging those guys. And, uh, you know, when, when, once we get to game week, we'll kind of start nailing down who is that next guy, you know, to, to go into the ball game if somebody would happen to go down. But right now, we we're, we're, we got them all in the mix, and we're saying, hey, uh, it's still a battle. Coach Narduzzi was saying earlier this morning that when you guys look, you know, the coaches aren't the ones that set the starters and say you guys are the starters. That when you guys look and you watch the team play, that the players make it clear who the starters are. When you look at your safety position with Jordan Whitehead, Javante, and uh, Pat Amara in there. Is there any one of those three that jump out and make a clear case, or are they all kind of, you know, making strong cases in and of themselves? If, if you looked at the uh, production from the last scrimmage, you would have to say, you know, Jordan was the guy. But as you go through practice throughout the week, you know, we still grade that as well. So there might be one guy jumping ahead of another guy the next, for one day, and then the next day somebody else is ahead. So we just got to keep our eye on it, and we're going to keep tracking it. We're, we're taking an account on the day who wins the day. And probably at the end of uh, this week, we'll probably decide who won, who won the, more, the more days throughout the camp and throughout the scrimmages, and that will probably be our guy leading up until. But uh, like I said, we got, we got, uh, we got uh, uh, tomorrow, the small scrimmage, they're off, and We'll sit in as a staff on Sunday and, and kind of, you know, total those numbers up and just see how, see how we did, see how those guys did over the, over the uh, whole camp. Jordan obviously has a lot of natural talent, but what's he done during this camp to get better and work himself into that position where, you know, he could be a contention to be starting? I know the, the biggest thing that we, we look at is like, you know, how how do you, how do you evolve from practice to practice? Are you continuing to make the same mistakes or are you learning from those mistakes? And when you look at his production and the way he's been moving up, he's been learning from his mistakes. You, you tell him once and he's got it, and usually that doesn't show back up on film. And uh, uh, just playing at the next level, that was one of the indicators a lot of times when deciding, you know, from uh, one guy to the next, you know, who can pick up on the scheme and move forward. So uh, we challenge all those guys. And uh, obviously uh, uh, Pat and uh, Javante, they've been in the scheme a little bit longer. so. Uh, a lot of the nods go to them on that, but uh, the biggest thing you see you see is the production and how guys evolve from those mistakes. And, and uh, we talk about you know improving the defense and, and seeing the, the next phase of it. Uh, that's the things that you want to see out of, out of the defensive back group. Yeah, Coach Narduzzi, I said, so how much of that things do you want to see is them getting their hands on the ball? I mean, Creighton Turner which was a problem for them last year. When you looked at the film when you did when you came in, were they just missing opportunities or? Were there things that you guys needed to address in terms of schematics and let's give them more opportunities to take um, The biggest picture when I look at it is giving them opportunities in practice. Uh, we want our drills to simulate, you know, the things that they're going to get in the ball game. So if that takes more ball drills or competition drills with ourselves or with the receivers, we try to put ourselves in, in those many scenarios. So when we do get in games, we are used to that. So it has been an emphasis for us uh, this camp of uh, you know making a play. Like I mentioned, MAP, we talk about it every day in the meetings. And uh, that's, that's been a huge focus. And uh, we're going to continue that focus uh, all the way up into the Youngstown game and throughout the season. And just this playing man, I mean, we were just talking about it, take some of that thought process out in terms of coverage and just cover the guy in front of you and get the ball. Does that sort of simplify things? Uh, it, it does, in theory. especially for our eye control. You know, knowing that that guy is yours, uh, it definitely helps a lot. And uh, these guys, all they want is opportunity. And 
whatever coverage gives you opportunity to man to man because you know the ball is coming to you. You know when you press what kind of routes you're going to get. So uh, tendencies we can pick up on those guys that that, that helps a lot as well. So just uh, you know being a coach and giving them those scenarios and going through them in the film room and saying, hey, if he has this split, more than likely you're going to get this route. So now we start stretching their minds a little bit. And, and so when they get into play, they're prepared, they're calling things out, and, I, and that entails going to help you make more plays. Coach Narduzzi mentioned Dane Jackson uh, this morning as a guy who's freshman who's impressed this year. What have you seen from him? You know, Dane's, Dane's a quick uh, learner as well as like, like Jordan. Uh, he moves very well. Uh, he has a silent confidence about himself. Uh, probably doesn't say a lot, but his, his, his play speaks for itself. And, um, you know, um, I'll, I'll come in one day and ask, ask him to, to make an adjustment, and he'll do it on the spot, and you see those flashes. So let's continue to coach that up, and uh, you know it's going to turn into something bright. Is he going to play for you guys this year, you think? Uh, like I said, it's competition all <laughs> over. And, and if, regardless if, he wouldn't, if, it, if the opportunity wasn't at the beginning of the season, we're going to keep evaluating through the whole year. So, uh, you know, you never know in this game. Uh, guys go down. Uh, you know, guys improve over the year. So that's that's the biggest thing is trying to evaluate. And we'll evaluate it each week moving throughout the year. Talking about playing press coverage, how much that cuts down the route tree. How many routes does that take opposing wide receivers down to, depending on situation? Uh, pretty much five. Really? Uh, you get two outside and about three inside. So.